So if we're making our notes organized, this is February 18, 2016. So when you're 35 and you want to look back at what you were doing in 2016, you can go to YouTube and watch the video of what you learned in math. All right. Some of these ones are easy because 5 times negative 4 is? Now we're multiplying. Negative 20. So that's why this, what we're doing right now, we're multiplying monomials. Monomials are terms that are numbers and variables joined together by multiplication. And if you multiply a monomial times a monomial, you'll just get a bigger monomial because it's all multiplying all the way along. Now, when we multiply, as in the second one, 3 times x, well, we'll look at those kind of things in a second. But when you multiply 3 times x, when we write it, we can write it just as 3x, because that means 3 times x, even though we don't show that there's a multiplication in between there. Whenever there's a coefficient in front of a variable, it means multiplication. So what do you think x times 6 would be? 6x. And we always write the coefficient first. So whatever number we have, we write it first. Then we write our variables after that. So 8 times negative x? Negative 8x. And negative x times negative 2? Positive 2x. Excellent. And so some of the ideas that we have in mul multiplying monomials go goes back to what we learned in exponents. So if I have negative 2x times negative 5x, what am I going to get? It's going to be 10, positive 10, and x times x is x squared, right? Because whenever you have repeated multiplication of the same variable, you can show that with an exponent. Now, when we multiply two variables together, it's just x, y, and we typically write them in alphabetical order. It's still OK, and it's not wrong if you write them in a different order, but typically, we write them in alphabetical order. And it's helpful when we write them in alphabetical order because then we can recognize like terms easier. So this next one, it's going to be negative AB. Now if you're multiplying three things, M times N times 2P, Again, we'll multiply all the numbers in front. The only number in front that we see is the 2. What, uh, what numbers are in front of the other ones that we don't see? 1. So if you did 2 times 1 times 1, you would still get 2. And then m times n times p. 2 minip. 2 minip. 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 <laughs> right? And this one becomes negative 12. How do you pronounce that? X E? Two times two x times three y times two z. What's the coefficient going to be when you multiply that all out? Twelve, because two times three is six times another two is twelve, and then you just have x y z. So up till now, except for the negative two x, the negative five x, we've just put our variables together, and it's been straightforward. But we can also use our exponent laws that we learned last semester to help us as well. Now, if I have negative 5y cubed times 2y, what's the coefficient going to be when I multiply? Negative 10. How many y's are there going to be? All multiply together. 
4 in it. So we can write that as y to the 4. Because there's three y's in the first one, y times y times y, and one y in the next one. And you put those all together, that would be like y to the 4. So if they both have coefficients of 1, you don't have to write the coefficient of 1. But if I have x times x squared, that's going to equal x to the 3. And 4x squared times negative 10x squared? 40, positive or negative? Good. x to the power 4. Perfect. Not so bad, right? So when we added and subtracted, we could only do that with like terms. But multiplying it doesn't matter if they're like or not. Multiplying monomials, you just multiply the coefficients and then multiply the variables together. So here's our rules for multiplication. We're going to always multiply our coefficients together. And we remember some of our rules, like a positive times a positive is positive. A negative times a negative is positive. But a positive times a negative is negative. So if we have variables that are different, like a and b or x and y, then we could just write them beside each other when we multiply them. And if the variables are the same, well, that's our exponent laws. That's when we multiply things together. So if you had something like 3x cubed times 4x squared, well, multiplying the coefficients together would give you 3 times 4, which is 12. And x cubed times x squared, if we think about repeated multiplication, there would be 5 x's all multiplied together there. So we get x to the 5. So if you had b cubed multiplied by b squared, yes, it would. Excellent. So this looks a little bit more intense, but we do the same idea. Look through those things. What do you think it's going to be? Good. X5, excellent. Perfect. So we put the coefficients together. Negative 4 times 5 gives us negative 20. We look at our variables that are the same. And we can just add the exponents, because we have x times x in the first one, and x times x times x, repeated multiplication in the second one. When we put that all together, you have 5x's all multiplied together. Same thing with the y's. We have 1y in the first one, and y times y in the second one. When we put that multiplication together, we get y cubed. 